Welcome, my fellow weeaboos and animated movie connoisseurs. Upon popular demand, I have decided to make a How to Train Your Dragon Strength and Power tier list. For this list, I will be ranking all of the characters and dragons that fought during the How to Train Your Dragon movie trilogy. If you want me to make a list that includes all of the dragons and characters from the shows, you'll have to get this video to a million views. Dropping into the fodder tier are all of Hiccup's useless friends. Snotloud is at the bottom as he constantly shows his ineptitude and the only guy he ever took out was from behind. The twins Rupnut and Toughnut have actually fought people head on. And Rupnut has the special ability to annoy people until they let her go. And Toughnut has the special ability to scare people away with his screams. Fishlegs is at the top of the fodder tier due to his added bulk, which he uses to his advantage on multiple occasions. Next up is the Viking tier. These characters and creatures are at the very least not completely incompetent. Hobgoblers have jaws strong enough to chomp through wood, though one on its own isn't the biggest threat. Another pint-sized dragon is the Terrible Terror. They're small, but one was able to easily take down Tough Nut. You could argue they should be higher due to Gobbers saying it was one of the big boys and implied each dragon they faced was stronger than the last in the first movie when they were doing their training, which would put it above the Zippleback but I think the actual on-screen showings highly contradict this. If anything, they just might be more trouble for the kids in training due to their small size and agility. But in a fight, I don't see them defeating the larger dragons. Eret Son of Eret is the self-reported best dragon trapper alive, and was shown to be vastly above your standard fodder. Hiccup started off as a weakling, but by the end of the series he was an accomplished warrior with a fire sword and fireproof dragon scale armor that also allowed him to glide through the air and dropkick his enemies. He could easily deal with the fodder soldiers. Astrid has always had the physical edge over Hiccup since the first film. And even in the third film, Hiccup admits Astrid always wins when she put him in a wrist lock. She can also easily deal with the soldier fodder and use her acrobatic ability to outmaneuver and land a blow on a death gripper. Volka is on a similar level to Astrid, being more athletic than her son Hiccup, and strong enough to defeat a large viking in an arm wrestle. She was able to fight back a bit against Drago, temporarily block Death Gripper fire, and outmaneuver them. At the bottom of the low dragon tier is the Rumblehorn. Hiccup and Astrid needed to be saved from one, so it should logically at least be a tier higher than them. Apart from breaking out of some chains, Rumblehorns really didn't do anything else noteworthy in the film, so that's why they're at the bottom of this tier. Grump the Hot Burple treats groups of soldiers like bowling pins, which would be enough to land him in this tier. Next up, the Gronkle. They have six powerful fireball shots that can break through shields. Fishlegs Gronkle Meatlug has also shown she has powerful fire blasts. Right above the Gronkle is the Deadly Natter. You could argue it should be below the Gronkle since at the beginning of the first film Hiccup said a Natter head would get him noticed, but taking a Gronkle down would get him a girlfriend. But the Gronkle was the intro dragon Gobber used for their training, and he implied he was going in order of strength. Plus the Natter is faster, has launchable venomous spikes on its tail, and apparently the hottest fire in the dragon world. The Gronkle's only advantage is its better defense, but I don't think that's enough to put it higher. Gobber was able to physically overpower a Gronkle using his hook arm, which he can also change into a club arm which he used to knock Eret Son of Eret over the head with. Ragnar the Rock got the better of Gobber in their fight in the third film, so he goes one spot above him. Moving up to the mid-dragon tier, at the bottom are the armored dragons in Drago's army, and the species pictured is the Thunderclaw. They were able to wipe out all the Viking chiefs besides Stoic, who was forced to flee, so it makes sense they're in the same tier as him. One was shown getting the better of a Windstriker dragon. Next is the Zippleback. They were considered one of the big boys by Gobber so it makes sense to put them a tier above the Deadly Natter and Gronkle. They have two heads, one breathes a combustible gas, and the other one lights it, but they both have razor sharp teeth that inject venom for pre-digestion. They can also do some crazy flame wheel attack. Death Grippers have a powerful flaming acid breath and venomous scorpion-like tails. Hiccup, Astrid, and Volka had to flee from them, and four Death Grippers push Toothless to use his electrical move. Possibly even more deadly is the monstrous Nightmare. Only the best Vikings go after them, and it was considered the strongest dragon Gobber had in stock. Not only can it shoot fire, but it can coat its whole body in it. It's also physically larger than most of the other dragons. 
Stoic has incredible physical strength, being able to throw carts like nothing, physically overpower natters, and break open Toothless's restraints underwater. He was able to fight a monstrous nightmare while it was on fire, and later beat it back after it ran out of fire, which is why I put him one spot higher. Drago used his dragon scale cape to walk right through the fire of a monstrous nightmare, and made it submit with fear. He smacked down Valka and would have finished her off if Stoic didn't step in. He had the edge over Stoic as well, but the fight was back and forth, so that's why I put him in the spot above in the same tier. We are reaching into the clouds with the high dragon tier. The dragons in this tier are too much for any viking to handle in physical combat. At the bottom is Valka's Stormcutter, Cloud Jumper. He was able to throw around Death Grippers and lift up a metal barrier that multiple Death Grippers couldn't get past. Besides the Bewilder Beast, he was the top dragon at Valka's Mountain Fortress, so it only makes sense for him to be in the high dragon tier. The Crimson Gore Gutter is huge, being able to smash through large masts in a stone tower, sending Death Grippers falling with the rubble. The Light Fury has many of the same abilities as the Night Fury, and can also become temporarily invisible. It has the same stats as the Night Fury, so this is also the spot where most Night Furies would go, including Toothless before becoming the Alpha. At the top of this tier is Grimmel. I did say these dragons are too much for Vikings to handle in physical combat, but this Dragon Hunter uses a crossbow with Venom that can take out almost any dragon. He is the one that pushed the Night Furies to near extinction and he knocked out both the Light Fury and Toothless with his weapon. At the top of the tier list, we have the Alpha Tier. These dragons are so powerful, they can command hordes of other dragons, and it would take a group effort from pretty much all of the other tiers working together to stand a chance. At the bottom of this tier is the Red Death, the Queen of Dragons. She has a heavily armored skull and tail made for bashing and crushing, and due to all of her eyes, she basically doesn't have a blind spot like the other dragons. She treats her fellow reptilians as slaves to bring her snacks, and if they don't bring her enough, they become the snack. Despite her massive size, some would say thickness, she can fly, and also has powerful fire breath. The Red Death was the queen of dragons, but the Bewilder Beast are the kings of dragons. They are bigger than the Red Death, and they also have massive horns that can gore their enemies. Instead of breathing fire, they have a powerful ice breath. You could argue the Red Death should be higher due to her ability to fly, but the Bewilder Beast also have the power to mind control lesser dragons, even being able to make Toothless try and kill Hiccup. It's unknown if the Red Death could resist this, or if she used a similar power to control the dragons of birth, or if she just did it through pure fear. But the Bewilder Beasts do have higher stats in just about every category, so I think it's safe to put them higher. Drago's Bewilder Beast killed Valka's Bewilder Beast in combat, making it the new alpha. That is, until Toothless gained his new Alpha mode, defeated the Bewilderbeast, and cemented himself as the true Alpha. Physically, he's much smaller and weaker than the other dragons in this tier, and is still vulnerable to Grimmel's Venom shots, while the other Alphas are likely too big to be taken down by it. But if he isn't taken by surprise, his speed makes him almost impossible to tag, and his firepower is enough to even break a Bewilderbeast's horn. Even before becoming the Alpha, Toothless was able to outmaneuver and trick the Red Death into killing itself. And now he is the Alpha with all of the other dragons, including the Bewilderbeast, bowing to him. I think it's clear he has to be at the top of the list. Now we have arrived at the end of this tier list. And now it's time for you to like this video and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on all the new tier lists I'll be coming out with. I made this list due to all of the recommendations I got for it, so don't be afraid. Put what you want to see next in the comments section, because it might end up happening. See you next time. Giddy up, boy! Yeehaw!